All right, everyone, so you should have a copy of last week's work. If you don't, you can always uh, use mine from the network folder, but I've got my work in my flash drive, so I'm going to open the index file from my flash drive. Let's see, the 24th. Uh, I'm going to make a copy first. I've still got last week's date on it, so I'm going to make a copy so that I have this week. And remember, you can simply right-click the folder and select copy and then on an empty spot right click paste. It's a very basic way to make a backup. A true backup of course is that you've copied your project to a completely different storage. Because if I've got five copies on my flash drive, great, but then my flash drive falls in the river, I lost all the originals and the copies. So if I've got a copy of my work also on my laptop, that's better. And then if you take advantage of the various cloud solutions, OneDrive, Dropbox, Google Drive, etc. Save your work there too, and okay, your 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 laptop fell in the in the lake, and your flash drive, but not your online storage. So I use them definitely to back up my my projects. So on today's work, I'm going to load up the index file. Load up the index file in Notepad and I'll check it in Firefox really fast just to see what it's looking like. To remind myself. Just the index file for the moment. Now, here's one of the things that I remember from last time. Question? Yeah, this is, I need permission to paste this file. You're most likely you're copying it and pasting it in my network folder. Copy it to your desktop. Copy it from my network folder to your desktop. Paste, I mean. So one of the things I remember from last week that we, we did was we wanted to get this navigation bar working, and we did. We go from page to page. One weird thing that we never got to work that does work on the example is that you go from page to page, and then the the link gets stays highlighted. Um, I was I was looking at it a few more times, double checking our code, and I actually found a little problem with it, which we'll fix. But I don't think that quite fixed the issue either. So I still have to look at it. The reason for this is um, I'm just trying to keep up with the latest code that the that the site provides us. So you know sometimes this is this is debugging, this is beta testing. So there's still something going on here. Yes. How is it that we did the split screen? I can't remember how we put that. You can do a split screen by right-clicking your tab in uh, Notepad++ plus plus and select Move to Other View. Oh. And then you get the split screen view, two pages of code. So we tried to get this nav bar working all through JavaScript. And it works, but it's still got that one little quirk that it's supposed to stay highlighted. When I go to PC, it's supposed to stay highlighted. What we need to do is open up our JavaScript file again, because remember, we stored all of that functionality, the behavior layer, in the JavaScript file. So let's go back to your project folder, your, your flash drive, and we want to edit the codica.extra.js. Let's edit the JavaScript file. That's the behavior layer. And when you've got both of those open, this might then be useful, um, what I said a moment ago about right-clicking a tab, move to other view, and you can see two at once. And if you want to get it back to normal, you can right-click it again and move to other view. It's just two views, apparently. You've also got right-click clone, which opens the same file, and that way you can look at one part of the code as well as another part in the same file. I'm on line 53, and I'm on line 6, if you want. That's cloning the view. New instance. Move to new instance. Open new instance. It just opens a brand new notepad window. 
But anyway, we're in the JavaScript file, and here's our code that was um, making our, our navbar work. And here's what's, what I noticed after looking at the code with a fine-tooth comb. Uh, line 2 is our shorthand for jQuery mobile. Uh, we're creating what is, uh, what is known as an, um, what's it called again, an instantly invoked function expression. This just means that this is all of the code that we're going to use throughout our project. And we have an opening, we have an opening uh, curly brace here. And of course, we've got the closing one down here. But that's the problem. It's closing in the wrong place after double checking the code. It's not supposed to close all the way down here. It's supposed to close after the two lines of data role navbar and data role header. So on line four, give yourself a new line five. Press enter to give yourself a new line five. This function over here, curly brace, is supposed to close here, not way down there. So we need to drag um, the closing curly brace, closing parentheses, closing semicolon, drag it from line 16 back to line 5. Question? Run it in Firefox because Chrome is being weird about loading the JavaScript files. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So looking, looking back at the original code, that's what this said. The original code said you need to end this function here instead of down there. Save it. That still doesn't fix the issue, I don't believe. But now the code is correct. Let me confirm. I'm going to load up Firefox again. Yeah, it's supposed to automatically have the home button highlighted. When you go to art, the art button highlights and stays highlighted. So it works, but not exactly as I want it. Unfortunately, I'm sure there's still some other little bit of code that is eluding my view. If any of you notice it, let me know so we can tell the class. But you know that goes to show even, even, even some people make mistakes. Yes. Why wouldn't you just for each section include that map bar as part of the section? You just have that stamp. Traditionally, I did when I would when I would teach this class, we would have that nav bar on every section, and that works perfectly. But then you kind of have more code to deal with. With three pages, home page, art page, PC page, not so much, just three nav bars. But what if I've also got an about page, a contact us page, ten pages, let's say. So now I've got ten nav bars to deal with. Each one of those nav bars has three links, three times ten, thirty links that I have to make sure that they all work at all times. And that's how we did do it on previous semesters, and it worked. I'm trying out something a little bit new this time, and it's kind of working. We can live with it for the moment. I'll keep researching to get it to fully work, but at least it is clickable that you can go from page to page. That's a big thing about it. And again, if anyone um, here's, I was looking at this over at the jQuery Mobile, jQueryMobile.com. In the demos. in the toolbar, no, uh, navbar, nav bar? no, toolbar, yes, uh, so if you'd like to look at it yourself, it's in the demos under toolbar, and then there's going to be a link to persistent external, right there, persistent toolbars, persistent toolbars. And basically what we did together, this is the example here. Notice it's going from page to page and it stays highlighted. And at jQuery Mobile they'll always have view source. Well, how does it work? So under view source is what we typed together last time. And then I noticed, oh, that's in the wrong place there. 
So if any of you want to look at it and maybe see what's different than mine, and there's going to be a few differences regarding spaces and such that should not matter. And there's, of course, the single and double quotes. But anyway, I'm going to move on. It works. It doesn't work exactly as I would want that they stay highlighted. But the code is there if you want to look at it yourself. OK, so what I want to do is if we look at the example of the class project again, On the art page, we've got content, and we've got these two buttons, SDCP catalog and art calendar. If you click on art calendar, get this side panel. We're going to do that now. And then also, if you click on this link, SDCE catalog, that opens a live version of the catalog on the college's website. So I want to do that. I want to do both of those things on our site here in the art page, I want to um, make that work. Okay, so we'll go back to Notepad into the index file. And the way that will work is, this is a new HTML tag that we haven't talked about yet. We've dealt with sections which are the whole screen folds of our project. And then we've got articles, which is the main content. We've got another tag that is related content to a section. It's called an aside, A-S-I-D-E, aside. So it's coming again from the world of publishing, where in publishing clearly there's articles and sections. Do you know what, it, what an aside is in the world of books and publishing and such? And a side would just be side content, maybe a sidebar or a pull quote. It's side content, but related to some main content. So we're going to do the same thing here in HTML by having an aside section, an aside tag, which will load content that is tangential to the main content. And in our case, it will be a little side panel that slides into view. I want to add that to the art screen. So you tell me, what line number or so should we jump to to work on the art section? We've only got 120 lines of code. Here's one way. What, what's, uh, that's way too generic. What specific line number are we editing for the art screen? Let's check 67. 67. Well, our numbers might be a little off, but uh, yeah, mine's 59, because I see data title art, ID art, and section. So the point of that is, well, we had differing line numbers, but here's one way to do this. Once we've got 500 lines of code, let's use good old edit, I don't know where is it at, search, find the find feature. We're going to use this a lot in our code. If we've got 500 lines, and we need to jump to a particular section. And I know that the section, for example, is called art. Instead of me scrolling and scrolling and scrolling to find art, let's let the computer do what it's good at, which is mindless tasks. Let's search, find, find what? Art. Well, before we do that, that's a little generic. I could have the word Bart somewhere or start so I have the ability to match case so if I match case and search for capital art it will it will pull it will find less versions of it uh, so watch this if you if you don't choose match case and on the right side it says count how many instances of the word art are found in this document if I count art there's 14 so that's not going to take me exactly to where I'm looking for. If I do match case, capital A-R-T, count, three. So that narrowed it down. 
if I had written, however, in the art section a bunch of stuff about art, maybe still art wouldn't be quite as specific. Here's another way. We know that we use the art, or we should recall that we use the art ID in our project to denote a section. Well, it's going to follow the format of ID equals art. ID equals home, ID equals art, etc. Because there's only one of them in our whole project. So maybe if we instead ID equals quote art end quote and count only one place in our 120 lines of code comes up. That'd be a quick way to, to jump to it. Well, the thing about programming is we always obviously want to do it right, but we want to do it quick. And sometimes they don't quite match up, but uh, here's how I would do that even quicker. Um, ID equals quote A. Maybe, maybe this will work, maybe it won't. Maybe I have other sections that are named art or about or allocation. Maybe that might not work, but I'm just saying what's the fastest it was one match. What's the fastest way to search for something without, without having to type out the whole search term? So in this case here, that would work. ID equals quote A. There's only one of them in my document. Find next. And all of that was just to say, now I found the, the place. Yes, I could scroll and scroll and scroll. Don't get used to that. Get used to finding. Think about what's in your project what keywords that you can use to find that are unique to help you jump to the section. And so we've got, we found the section, hopefully, line 59 or so. <clears throat> I want to add that, uh, that side panel that is tangential content. It's content that's a tangent, it's adjacent to my main content of the art. So we will use the aside tag, and we will do this by uh, adding it before the article. I believe the documentation says it doesn't matter before or after, but I like to put it before just so that I can find it quickly. Let's do the aside tag, A-S-I-D-E, aside. This is on line 60. This is going to have a, a few data roles, of course, and other elements. Um, the biggest is that we need to add a data role. Many things need a data role. This time it's not a page, or main, or footer, or anything like that. Uh, it has a data role of panel. How do I know that? Because the documentation, jQuery Mobile, the website defines all of the possible things we can do. So you should, if you haven't done so yet, poke around at the jQuery mobile website, read the demo screen, and um, you'll get more knowledge. So this has got a data role of panel. Um, and this needs a unique ID so that we can reference it, so that we can link to it. So that's not going to change. We need ID equals something, and we'll call this art cal simply because I'm in the art section, so ID art, but it's a subsection, it's an aside, and I'm adding to it cal, capital C in my case. Inside of the panel, um, then we add some content, actually, uh, but this one is uh, pretty basic because just whatever is inside of a side will just automatically display. You could have heading 1s and heading 2s and all of that stuff, so well, let's do this. We'll write a, a heading 1 tag. The art calendar panel is going to swoop into view, and it's going to list uh, current and maybe upcoming events. Um, it's at the moment not going to be dynamic. It's not going to pull data from a database and always be current. For the moment we'll just design it and then if, if we can, then later on we can make it dynamic. But I'm going to say that this is going to list last month, this month, and next month. 
So last month was uh, August. And then we'll have um, another section. Uh, for the moment, let's list them like this. And I'll explain why. Heading 1, Heading 2, we're in September. And then next month, Heading 3, October, which is just in a couple of days, isn't it? And then within a particular month, we'll add uh, some bullet points, plain old bullet points. Let's say in May, or in August, uh, bullet points. I want bullet points that are not numbered. Anyone remember that tag? Yes, go ahead. Oh, an ordered list, UL, yes. So, UL. This will be bullet points. List item. So this is going to be some bullet points. These are the individual bullet points. And we'll just make up two things. And we'll copy and paste that into September and October. And we'll just fill in some stuff for the moment. So a list item is the one particular bullet point, point item. Let's say in August we had student show. And we also had um, bake sale, fundraiser. Is fundraiser two words or one? Fundraiser. It's two words, isn't it? Okay, so just something basic like that, and copy this unordered list and then place it after September and October, and maybe change it a little if you want. doesn't quite matter the content, just put a little content there, a few bullet points. We won't exactly see what this looks like until we link to it, because this is content that exists as its own section, and therefore it doesn't display automatically until we trigger it, until we click something to display it. So we won't be able to see it if we run it in Firefox. We'll just put a little content there. And so, like everything we've done so far, if we've got a home screen and we want to go to a, an about screen, we need to have some sort of trigger, a button or something, that takes us to the other page. We're going to need the same thing here. So we're going to add a button in the um, art screen, just like our example. We're going to have a button that you can click to show you art calendar. And if we're going by my example, we actually had two buttons side by side in the example. and uh, A button that shows the calendar and a button that shows an external website. The way we accomplish that is we can use the grid that we've that we've got hanging around back on the home screen at about line 51 we have a grid that divided our our screen into two columns so find on about line 51 div class ui grid a um, this is a grid that will give us two columns basically so copy that from about line 51 to 56 let's copy that and we'll use that as a way to have a button on the left and the right in the art section. So let's see, copy that. We'll scroll down. Let's see, we'll scroll down into the article, the, the UI content of art, that's line 77. Uh, we've got hello art page, keep scrolling. So before the end of the article for the art section, line 96. We want to paste that two-column div in, inside of your article for art.
And the way it works is that you've got a a div, you've got one div that encompasses the whole layout of columns, and you can have grid A, B, C, D, I think it goes up to, maybe. And then those are how many columns? Uh, those, are, those are how many rows? Grid A is one row, and B is two rows, etc. Then if you want columns, well, you've got a block A and a block B. So first column, second column, you want a third column, block C. And those are divs there. And those divs can have anything. I'm just simply putting text at the moment. They will become a button. I just want to check if we're on the right track here. I'm going to save it and run it. In the art screen, I should have some text that says art, col uh, art calendar doesn't look very good yet. Of course, we need to upgrade it into a button. And when we click it, it's going to make a side panel appear. This is our code so far. So if we want this clickable, we need to add a link. So we've got the A tag, it's an anchor, href. We want to link over to that panel. It has an ID, so we've got the pound symbol. I notice that sometimes when people ask for help that you're trying to link to another page or another element, but you're forgetting the pound symbol. It's called artcal. Data roll button. And we have an icon built into jQuery mobile that displays a calendar. So we'll do data-icon equals calendar. So let's try that. Save it and run it. Let's see if you get a side panel. If you do, it'll look something like that. Anyone need a little help? <laughs> okay, let me put my code up here. It's in a couple of places, so you might not be able to see it all. Or I could do this. There we go. So the left side has the link and the right side has the yes sound. That did contact uh, I like that because I, I know it's that really, really It's very direct to do, but it's not this.
Yeah, let's go. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Everyone, everyone got it? Ready to move on? Did everyone get the sign-in sheet also? No, I need that too. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if this worked, now we get a side panel. So this is side content. It's a side. And it's got a data role of panel. That's new. But it's still using the convention of the ID. We're linking to different things within our project with IDs. And then the, the, the link at the bottom was just a plain old link inside of the grid. That's slightly different. But this is an aside. And in tutorials, again, probably you'll often see these things with simply div data role panel. So don't panic. You should have it as an aside. Now, when you actually see the result, um, right here, uh, right here, when you see the result, then uh, you click on it. The whole screen slides over really nice, all built-in animation and drop shadows and all of that. And so we've got August, September, October. They look a little bit different. Uh, September actually looks larger than than August, even though it's an H2. So usually H1 is the biggest, boldest text on screen, and then H2, second biggest, second boldest, etc. down the line. This is uh, looking a little different simply because the different um, headings are redefined through the jQuery mobile CSS file. We can then further redefine them, you know, re redefine them within our own unique CSS file, which we would do a little later. That's why those look different. At least it's working. Um, like many things, there are other there are also extra um, attributes and such that we can further add to refine things. Uh, we can change the way that this panel appears, and if you notice, well, if I wanted to close it, perhaps if I had it on a mobile device, I would think about swiping it back. I don't quite do that on a web browser. So I might think, well, I don't see any close button anywhere. We'll add one in a moment. But if you notice, if you click outside of it, it does close. That might not be obvious, especially if you've got a small screen, you know, a little smaller like that, where it's even less here. If someone swipes it, they would close it, but I wouldn't think to swipe on a, on a desktop. So we'll add a close button to make it obvious, even though you can close it by clicking outside of it. Um, before that, just for fun, let me show you other animations and other ways that this can be loaded up instead of just that way. We have this default one, which I forget what it's called, and we can look them up. But let's say we wanted a different kind of animation for our panel. We're going to back up to where our aside, where our aside panel is, line 60 or so. We've got data role panel. We've got another data attribute that we can add. This data attribute makes sense because we've got jQuery mobile. If we don't have jQuery mobile, it doesn't do anything. But right after data role, let's add data dash display equals quotes. And here we've got, I think, four, maybe five choices. How can we display the panel? Let's try this one. Overlay, one word. Save it and run it and see how that changes. So we did not choose a particular style, and it did a default style. We moved the whole screen over to reveal below it. This one of overlay, let's see, what's the difference? Overlay, there we go. So it overlays itself on top of your content. The bottom content doesn't move, but you get a new panel on top of it. So both ways are useful. Um, there's, a, there's two more. I don't remember what they're called. Let's look them up. I'm going to go over to jQueryMobile.com. Into the demos. Back up completely. jQueryMobile.com. Go to the demos. I'm going to use shorthand, of course, because I don't want to say over and over. Let's go to demos. Let's go to 1.45 demos. When I say, let's go look at the jQuery mobile documentation, I'm assuming you're looking at this screen here. And then it's um, under widgets, panel. Flexible by design, panels can be used for navigation, forms, inspectors, and more. 
overlay. We just did overlay. Reveal. And push. See a difference between push and reveal? Very subtle. When you do reveal, the front screen slides away, and the bottom screen is fixed. When you do push, both the bottom and the front slide at the same time. See, it's really subtle. And then obviously overlay goes on top. You can put it on the right side also. They used an alternate color there. But same idea, reveal it, overlay it, left or right. The position of the panel on the screen is set by the data position attribute. We didn't specify one, but the default is left. So if we added data position right, we would get this panel to appear from the right. Easy. Data display. We've got reveal, overlay, and push, and the default is reveal. And we wrote overlay, and you can select push. A panel must be a sibling to the header, content, and footer elements inside a jQuery mobile panel. It's just saying where to add it in your code. And basically, it's inside the section data role page before either header, content, or footer, which is what we did. We put it before the content. If you want to use the same panel on multiple pages, you can place the markup outside the page and see this external panel. Okay, so this aside that we added really only works for and exists for the section of art. If we wanted to reuse this panel on other screens, we would have to read that documentation and see how that works. I'm not going to, but you can. Dynamic content. When you dynamically add content to a panel or make hidden content visible while the panel is open, you have to trigger the updated layout event on the panel. So again, this is static content that loads up. If we really wanted it to load the latest month, which is going to change in a couple of days, um, we'd have to do extra work. But this is the point of bringing back jQueryMobile.com. Have I mentioned it in this class? Have you heard of the word, of the phrase RTFM? Anyone know what RTFM stands for? It's read the funky manual. <laughs> and so jQueryMobile.com is the manual. Everything that I'm talking about in this class basically comes from here and other, other websites and such and books. But it's all here. If you want to know how something works, they'll give you examples here. If you really want to know how something works, you go to the API documentation, and that'll spell it out even more detail, much more complex detail. But um, oh, remember this J JQM data. Here's all the bloody details how it works. But over on the demos, usually is where we'll spend our time to learn about how to set up a panel or a pop-up or other cool things. If you want complex stuff, we'll be in the API documentation section. And it looks like uh, jQuery Mobile and the whole jQuery family is going to be part of CSS Dev Conference 2015 in Queens Mary, California, October 26 to 28. So even jQuery Mobile frameworks are part of conferences and conventions nowadays. Just out of curiosity, how much does it cost? Because these things are not free. Oh, it is? Oh, okay. So it's probably even more expensive than I'm thinking. Let's see here. Register. Early bird ticket price, $495. Sold out. Sold out. Regular price, $745. So I read a joke somewhere like, okay, how do you make money online? Easy, just hold developers' conferences. Because these things are expensive. Twenty-six days left. Okay, so we've gotten our panel working, and if you'd like to change it to the other kinds, we've got push, overlay, and reveal. Not too many of them, but they don't need to be that flashy. And if you want dynamic content, we'd have to 
do more setup for that. Um, we'll do one more thing and then we'll take a break. Uh, on this art page, I also want to create another button to load the college's website. That'll be external content and that has its own uh, little concern we have to deal with. Before that, notice we added our button and it only is halfway on the screen. That's because it's in the grid that div grid uh, UI grid A block A and block B well that's column 1 column 2 so let's go back to about line 101 and we're going to add another button there this is for the classes on the school's website it's title it SDCE classes or uh, no let's call it um, catalog the latest catalog. Because it happened to a few people, let's do it backwards. Let's close the tag first. And then we'll open the A tag. We'll add the, the link where it's going to go in just a moment. But it'll be a data roll button. And we'll need an icon. Um, I'll just do star for the moment. We can look up a better one. But let's change that from a plain old text to a link to a jQuery button with an icon. All of this time, we've been dealing with an index.html file. And in that one HTML file, we have three sections. Home, Art, PC. We have different sections. We have different pages in our app. And the way we're doing it is known as the SPA method, a single page app. All of our screens are in one page, one HTML file. We can do that for a website, we can do that for a mobile app like this. It's an SPA, single page app. The good thing about that is that all, all content of the document of the app exists on one file. So it's easier to manage in that way. But conversely, it might also be difficult to manage because now you've got 500 lines, 700 lines in one document, 1,000 lines in one document. You've got to search through it, scroll through it, and so you get a really long document. You could suffer also performance issues if it's a website that has 5,000 lines of code that needs to download. You won't see that much that as much of an issue as an app because then it's loading as a fully installed app on your device when we get to that. But if this is a 5,000 long website, we have to wait for it to download before we can use it on a mobile device, it's installed, it's ready to use, basically. But we can mix the two, actually, and that's what we're going to do now. We're going to link to something that is not in this project. It's going to go elsewhere. We could link it to about.html. We could link it to contactus.html. Here we're going to link it to the college's website. It's an external file. And, that, and when we do that, we have to do one little different thing that we haven't done before. So first on the address here, we need to type the complete address, http colon slash slash sdce.edu. Just a web address, like, a, like the links have always been. So this is going to go outside of our project. Inside of our project, we're using the pound symbol. When we go outside of our project, well, we need the full path or the full address http colon slash slash sdce.edu Some web browsers will be happy with this, and some will not. So to cover all the bases to make sure they're all happy, we need to add one more thing. After the href space rel quotes, not data rel, because this is not, a, this is not an HTML5 specific attribute, 
it's a it's a classic HTML 1.0 or whatever attribute that is just kind of repurposed for the modern age. So it's rel. What's the relationship between the link you're trying to click on and the current document? The relationship is that it is external. Some web browsers will not care if you use rel external, and the page will load. Some will care, and then it'll say file not found. Or just not found, I think. Because it's still going to think, oh, you mean the, you mean the SDCE ID in your project? No, I mean the SDCE website external to my project. Save it and run it. Two buttons, taking up a nice amount of space because they're divided with the grid. Icon, click, click catalog, goes to the school's website. A little cumbersome though, because if I were to, uh, if I, if someone were browsing my my mobile, you know, if they did visit it on my mobile device eventually, and they click that button, and then they closed it, let's say there, oops, they closed my whole project. So I believe we talked about it previously on the first day or so when we made a link to an external website, we added another little thing to to open it in its own tab. So we've got rel equals external, and then we'll also add target equals underscore blank. That'll open that external website in its own tab or window. And for the moment, as a web app, this will be fine. Later on, when we make it an Android app, we have something called the in-app browser, which is very cool. It will open a mini web browser inside of our app to open someone else's website with uh, cool back and forward buttons and all of that. You close the in-app browser and you're still in the app. You see that probably when you use other apps. You load something in Facebook, a link, and it opens a web browser in Facebook. You open a link in Twitter app, it opens it in their in-browser. Question? Sure, but my screen is only big enough, so let's see if it fits. So if that worked, time for a break. We, uh, we have some external content loading, a side panel loading. It's 7.11, let's come back at 7.21, and then we'll keep working.